Try to survive and make it out of Game Night Alive. This is our review of Fight the Blade. Fight the Blight is a take that hand management game about surviving the zombie apocalypse, and I always enjoy attacking Kenny with theming behind it. This game adds one of my favorite new mechanics for a take that, and we'll tell you all about it after this quick how to play. At the start of the game, each player is given a character card, a fester card, and five starting cards. The character cards give each player an asymmetric power that they can use throughout the game. On each player's turn, they must take three actions, some combination of playing a card, drawing a card, or replenishing a card. Players will play red attack cards on their opponents, adding skulls to their totals. When a player reaches a certain skull count based on the number of players in the game, they turn into a zombie. However, that player is not out of the game. They continue playing and have a chance to revive themselves. If a zombified player zombifies the player currently holding the golden chalice, they can revive themselves and re-enter the game. The winner is the last human player left alive in the game. We were sent a copy of Fight the Blight from Ghostfire Gaming so that we could do this review. So thank you again for sending it to us. Fight the Blight is a hand management take that style game. So if you like exploding kittens, unstable unicorns, any of the games that we really talk about a lot on this channel because we really like take that style games, you're gonna like this game. Especially if you like zombies, which I'm a really big horror movie fan. I like zombie movies. So I like having take that style games and zombies. You combine those two, you get a great game. I like the illustrations or the artwork on the cards. They're very like, uh... I don't want to say comic book-ish, uh, I guess maybe anime-ish, uh, I don't know. Comic book is, I, I understand that. Yeah, okay. I really like the illustrations, they're really cool, and then, then you flip them over for your character cards at least, and you're like, oh, I wonder what this guy would look like as a zombie. Well, there it is. That's what he would look like as a zombie. I do like that the cards are double-sided so that when you're a character, you can see the regular character, you get into the theming. But then when you turn into a zombie, you see the zombie version. And it also works because you're still in the game even when you become a zombie. So it makes sense that you flip it over and now, now you can see your character as a zombie. You're still playing. Thematically, I'm not a big horror movie fan. You know, I like some of the zombie series that have come out and I'll watch one or two here. But for the most part, yeah, it's a little dark, but it's not like too gruesome. Like like the illustrations and everything. So it's got that nice balance for me. The big thing that I like is just how if you're out, you're not out of the game. I think that's the biggest thing with take that's right? Because in the very beginning, if let's say someone is just targeted and they're done, they're like, well, that wasn't fun. That's my new favorite mechanic that we've come across in a take that style game is the golden chalice. And what it is, as Lee was saying, if you're knocked out of the game by becoming a zombie, you're not actually knocked out of the game. You just can't win the game. So you win the game if you're the last human player alive. However, the zombies still keep playing and they can revive themselves by going after the player with the golden chalice. Not only that, when you zombify somebody, you choose the player with the fewest amount of skulls to get the golden chalice. So immediately, all of the zombies in the game are now going after the player who's technically winning because they have the fewest amount of skulls. So you're adding in a mechanic that makes people go after the person in the lead, not just go after people that you wanna target. Like if Lee and I are playing a take that style game, even if neither one of us are winning, we'll still go after each other. However, in this particular game with the golden chalice, you put the, the spotlight on the person who is technically winning and then everyone's going to start going after them if they're a zombie. I like that mechanic. I believe naturally that's how take that's are meant to be played. Like if you just played with strangers, obviously no one did you any wrong unless maybe they, they just attacked you once or twice and you're like, ooh, I'm coming after you. I don't even care if I win or lose anymore. But this kind of like directs everyone to play it how I think take that should be played. It's just like, okay, he's winning, everyone get him. And then, you know, once once they're done, it's like, all right, now he's winning, everyone get him. It also adds a little bit of strategy too, knowing that if you're gonna zombify someone, you don't wanna have the fewest number of skulls. You don't wanna be in the lead, the lead. You still need to plan out so you could win. However, you gotta kind of gauge, you're like, all right, I don't wanna be first player for the game because then I'm gonna get the golden chalice. But at the same time, I need to make sure I'm not gonna turn into a zombie. So it does add an interesting strategy element as well. And also they could have made the golden chalice a coin or something kind of silly, like a piece of cardboard or whatever, but they actually put in a lot of effort and you get a cute little golden chalice, almost big enough to be a shot glass, but not <laughs> quite. But it is very detailed and kind of a fun little element that you can have. That's not a normal part of your typical card game. So what I like is it just kind of takes a little bit from this take that, from that take that, like exploding kittens. I mean, some of the cards in here, like the purple ones are like power cards that you play in front of you. If you use it, you turn it sideways. So that reminds me 
reminds me of magic when you tap stuff. So they bring in a little bit of everything and I was just like, oh, okay, oh yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Like you draw these death cards and these are usually bad, so you wanna avoid it. So like as you're drawing the regular deck and you see a blight card come up, you're like, ooh, now I gotta do everything I can not to draw that card. So besides the blight cards and the death cards, there's really only three cards. There's red attack cards, purple like power or ability cards, and then blue like support healing cards. Since it's color coded, you pretty much know like, okay, maybe I hold on to these because they might help me. And then, all right, I got to play this power at some point. And then, yep, these are attacked. They're only going to attack. Some of the attack cards have different powers. Some of the purple cards have different things. And there is some reading. It's just not a lot of reading like in Unicorns. So while there's a good variety of the different powers and things that you can use to keep the game interesting, you're not sitting there for 20 minutes reading all the cards in your hand going, all right, what do I want to play? I got to read this, read all, what, what, what am I doing? You're not wasting time reading cards. We also got the expansion pack, the Dark Past versus Doom Futures, and just adds a little bit more of other cards. I mean, the death cards, we noticed that there were some good in there, not just all bad. So that kind of surprised us. And we were like, uh, uh, no, I don't want to draw it. And then you draw it, you're like, oh, okay, heal myself. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I really like the artwork. It's a little dark, but not gory or anything. So hopefully it's not offensive to like parents with young kids if they were to play it. I do like how they took everything or a little here and there from different Take That games. So to make it kind of like one amalgam of Take That. Overall, I'll probably give it a six and a half. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. I like the theming. I like the zombie theme and playing with a Take That game with that kind of theme makes it kind of fun. If you like Take That games and you want to try a couple of new interesting mechanics that I think kind of make the Take That a little bit more fun with the Golden Chalice, as far as being able to bring yourself back into the game, I really think that you should try this one out. I do like that element. I like this game a little bit better than Exploding Kittens and Unstable Unicorns, but it still gets a seven. So that Take That threshold of a seven is still right there, but this is still above some of the other ones that I also really enjoy. And that was our review of Bite the Blight. What'd you think? You ready to zombify your friends and be the last human standing? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to buy Fight the Blight, check out the link in our description below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny. I go party like a board gamer.